Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. In recent weeks, we've had a number of people contacting our ministry, Moriel, concerning something that we ourselves contemplated for a moment at least, and discussed on our weekly news analysis, catching up with Jacob on Moriel TV and on RTN TV. This thing, in light of the circumstances in which we all find ourselves on the global stage, was a question, could Mr. Zelensky, Vladimir Zelensky, could he be the Antichrist? And it seems like a plausible question for certain reasons. The book of Daniel tells us he'll spring up almost out of nowhere, inconspicuous, but then come to center stage in a very prominent way and captivate people, that he will enchant people. And we are told various other things. He will certainly counterfeit Christ, therefore in some way be of a Jewish background, which Mr. Zelensky certainly is. He seems to meet the description in certain aspects of Antichrist. Well, let's address this question. Could he be the Antichrist and the reasons why he is not the Antichrist? Let's begin by looking at certain characteristics of Antichrist himself. As you know, Antichrist means in place of Christ. We've written a book on this issue called Shadows of the Beast, and all of those in scripture and major historical figures who foreshadow the character and behavior of Antichrist and what he shall do. But there will be many Antichrists in the last days. There have always been Antichrists, but they multiply, multiply in their prevalence before Christ comes. We are also told in John's epistle that it's a spirit, a spirit that permeates the world through what theologians and philosophers would call the zeitgeist. That is the spirit of the age. That is the second aspect. There's a spirit of Antichrist, and there are many Antichrists. But then we're left with these two ultimate figures, these beasts of Revelation chapter 13. The man of lawlessness identified by Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the one who sets up the abomination of desolations in the temple, foretold by Jesus and by Daniel. Could this be Mr. Zelensky? He's Jewish. He springs up out of nowhere. He has a charisma and a dynamism that captivates the world suddenly in a time of global turmoil and growing turmoil simultaneously occurring both in the Middle East and in Europe. Could he be? Well, I don't consider it to be an irrational question. I don't consider it to be sensationalistic or hyper-speculative to people for people to take into account the similarities between the behavior and actions of Mr. Zelensky <clears throat> and what scripture tells us about the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. But let's understand there are many antichrists. In place of Christ, as we've pointed out innumerable times, in Latin, Vicarius Christus, the official title of the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, Vicarius Christus, one who acts vicariously in place of Christ, in Greek, is Antichristus. Every Pope identifies himself as Antichrist. Is the Pope the Antichrist? Well, no. Is the Pope an Antichrist? Absolutely. The leaders of cults are, are Antichrists. The founders and leaders of cults are Antichrists. They put themselves in the place of Christ. One example was Sun Young Moon, founder of the Unification Church, proclaimed himself to be Lord of the Second Advent. And he was heralded as a champion, as a hero by the American evangelical preacher, Jerry Falwell, who welcomed them to Liberty University, receiving a couple of million dollars in contributions from this person who said he was the return of Jesus, and who said, Christ, the real Jesus, we failed in his first mission, he's going to fulfill it. He went on to say, Moon did, that his wife was the Holy Spirit. 
Then when his wife died, he got another wife. Now she's called Mother Moon, and Sun Young Moon himself is dead. And you still have evangelical figures getting on platforms with Mother Moon. Well, this is a spirit of Antichrist. This is an Antichrist, even deceiving evangelicals. Joseph Smith was an Antichrist. Absolutely. He gave a false word of God, a, a, a pseudo-logon, the Book of Mormon. He was an Antichrist. He most certainly was. Anyone who in any religious sense puts themselves in place of him. Obviously, Muhammad essentially taught, at least by what's reported about him, that the Quran is the Third Testament, the old, the new, and then the Quran. And he's the greatest prophet, greater than Jesus. Jesus is inferior to Muhammad. Well, by New Testament definition in 1 John, Muhammad was an antichrist. Absolutely. The Dalai Lama, leader of Tibetan Buddhism, which is reincarnational Lamaism, says there's no creator, but yet he allows himself to be worshipped as a reincarnation of the Buddha. The Dalai Lama is an antichrist. All of these things, cults, false religions, however, it extends into the political realm. This goes back to the deification of the Roman emperors in the first century. Caesar Augustus certainly being the first. And this is what the early church had to contend with, and it's what the church will contend with at the end of the age, deified political leaders. However, the emperor of Rome was also the pontiff. He had a religious and political position. He was the Pontificus Maximus, the bridge builder between all religions within the Roman Empire, which he used as a position to try to bring about political union and social harmony among the multi-ethnic, multi-national composition of what had been the Roman Empire at that time, which in some way, Daniel tells us, is reborn in the last days or in the time before Christ returns. So, many antichrists. Jesus made it clear there are many, but not only religious, political. The proliferation of dictatorial demagogues in the last century uh, certainly shows an increase in antichrist activity in terms of the spirit of antichrist. When you see these demagogues, when you see these maniacal dictators who essentially want to have themselves deified, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, Kim Jong-il, now it's Kim Jong-un, his son, the, the, Nikolai Ceausescu from Romania, Pol Pot in Kampuchea, Cambodia. The proliferation of these emperors Mussolini called himself Il Duce, the great one. These maddened dictators who are into auto deification, they were all demon possessed and controlled by a spirit of Antichrist. And this is increasing in its activity and its prevalence, and will continue to do so until Jesus comes. Perhaps the main complication is there'll be so many antichrists and so many false prophets being able to exactly finger and point out which one is the antichrist, the false prophet, the man of lawlessness, the beasts from Revelation chapter 2, the son of perdition. What will distinguish him from the others is a very complicated issue. I'd point you to the book Shadows of the Beast where we deal with it in depth. But let's take these things in view and go on to the question of Mr. Zelensky. Yes, he's of Jewish background, but so is Jared Kushner from the Trump administration, related by marriage to Donald Trump. 
Now, I prayed for Donald Trump every day. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I think he was a favorable president to Christians and to Israel. I think he was not part of the corrupt establishment of either party. A lot of good things about him. However, I understand what the scripture says about deception. The Antichrist will bring a false peace to the Middle East. This very week, the Biden administration is trying to build on the Abraham Accords of the Trump administration, inaugurated by Jared and engineered by Jared Kushner, who is Jewish, looking for a false peace in the Middle East. Well, the Antichrist will do that. There can be no lasting peace anywhere, but especially not the Middle East until Jesus comes. A false peace, yes. People had due reason to be suspicious of Jared Kushner, but I'm not saying he was antichrist or malmotivated. But there'd be at least as much reason to wonder about him or speculate about him as about Mr. Zolinsky when we understand what the scripture says about these things. Mr. Zolinsky is being portrayed in mainstream media and in social media and by Western governments as some kind of an iconic hero. Well, let's remember something. Not very long ago, when Mr. Zelensky said there was no quid quo pro in his dealing with Donald Trump, the same mainstream media, particularly CNN and MSNBC, New York Times, Washington Post, and these other vehicles of pseudo-journalism, attacked Zelensky. The same people lauding him and praising him now attacked him when it was not in their political interest. Now that it is in their political interest, they laud him. You cannot believe the media. The world is in the power of the wicked one, and you cannot believe what they say. They do not report news. They editorialize news along the lines of their biases and in pursuit of their own interests. This is what happens. This is the nature of the media. The power of the air probably relates to it, as Scripture speaks of the powers of the air. Well, let's look further at this. He was a comedy actor, and you can see comedy skits of him using images that most people would interpret to be occult or even demonic. There is one clip of him and another comedy actor without their trousers, standing in front of a piano, waving their hands, playing the piano. Obviously, they were trying to show that they were using their sexual organs, reproductive organs, to play the piano. This is what he was doing. Now, understand how this works. When he's dancing with the leotards and doing his comedy routine, Russian TV does what the old communist media propaganda machine did, like it's Vestia and Pravda. When Ronald Reagan was president of the United States, the Russians continually showed the film Bedtime for Bongo when Ronald Reagan was in a comedy movie co-starring to a chimpanzee. And they tried to portray Ronald Reagan as this joke, somebody who co-starred to a monkey. Well, <laughs> now they do the same thing with Mr. Zelensky. They show his old films, and they tried to say, look what a clown and a madman this guy is. That's just the way the game of propaganda is, of course, played. But he was hated by the left, and he was not respected by anyone with a makatum of integrity. Let's understand why. The Ukraine was not a member of NATO, nor a member of the EU. It had the most corrupt government in Eastern Europe, the most corrupt government with the possible exception of Russia in Eastern Europe. The corruption was endemic, with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden up to their eyeballs, of course, in it, among others. Now, to understand something about the Ukraine economically, its main trading partner was China. China used the Ukraine as its base in Eastern Europe for economic investment. And also, Israeli high-tech companies 
which basically are vehicles for outsourcing by big American high-tech conglomerates. Israel has its own Silicon Valley in, in Herzliya, north of Tel Aviv. And some of these companies are American-owned or majority American-owned. And a lot of Israeli engineers and computer scientists graduating from the Technion, the Israeli equivalent of MIT. But where do the Israelis outsource to? Well, they outsourced a lot of their high-tech research and development to the Ukraine. Uh, still a sizable Jewish population there with a number of Jewish computer scientists and mathematicians. Mr. Zelensky came from that community, except he was from a border area where people spoke Russian more than Ukraine, right in the east of the Ukraine, bordering with Russia. The Western Ukraine was different. During the Second World War and during the Holocaust, there were Nazi elements in the Western, Crusade, Western Ukraine who were pro-Hitler. And there are still Nazi elements in the Western Ukraine and in the Ukrainian army. Now, no one would suggest the Ukrainian people are Nazis. That would be insane. They obviously are not. They have a Jewish president. But there is that element, both politically and socially, and in their military. And it's always been there. Always. We have to understand that there were two evils in the world in the 20th century facing each other. One was communism and the other was fascism. There were people in the West who went along with Perón in Argentina and Franco in Spain who were fascists simply because they were anti-communists. The Roman Catholic Church supported Mussolini in Italy uh, and, and the Eustaches in Yugoslavia because they were anti-communist. Um, the Centrum, the Catholic Party of Bavaria under Hans von Papen, a consort of Pope Pius XII, was the same way. The Roman Church supported fascism, and its justification was it was anti-communist. You had a conflict between two evils. This conflict continued after the Iron Curtain came down in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia in the Balkans, the powder keg of Europe, goes back to where the Roman Empire was split between its Latin West and its Greek Orthodox East, and it is where the Islamic invasions into Europe came. So you had a conflict of the Serbs, of the Kosovo Bosnians who were Muslim, and of the Croats who were Roman Catholic, who had been Ustashi in the Second World War. They were Nazis. Bad place. Well, after the Second World War, these countries were united by a communist, Marshal Tito. Tito was a communist. He did not believe in democracy. He ruled with an iron fist. But he was anti-Hitler and not as bad as Stalin. He was anti-Hitler and not as bad as Stalin. We have to understand Zelensky is the same kind of figure. He's not as bad as Putin, but that doesn't mean he's a good guy. He's not a good guy. There were 11 rival political, 11 rival political parties in the Ukraine. None of them supported Russia or Putin. All were anti-military adventurism of Putin, all of them. But Zelensky outlawed each party by decree, dictatorially, by dictatorship, anti-democracy, outlawed these 11 parties. He took over organs of media to stop any editorial criticism of himself or his policies. And he was doing this, doing this before Putin invaded. He's not a good guy. Ukraine is a corrupt country with a corrupt government. Zelensky is a corrupt man. 
He is also a disciple of Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum. He's like Andrews in Australia. He's like uh, Trudeau in Canada, Adair in New Zealand. He's of that ilk. He's not a good man. He's a pro-globalist, and he is, in no sense, a proponent of democracy. He's anti-democracy. He's like Tito. Tito was against Hitler, but not as bad as Stalin. He was a lesser of evils. All you have in Mr. Zelensky, politically, is a lesser of two evils. Now, of course, our sympathies are with the Ukrainian people. Most of the Ukrainian people have no Nazi leanings. Most of the Ukrainian people are victims of what Stalin is doing. But that does not impact the reality of its government, of the institutional corruption that is unbelievable in the Ukraine, or of the factual realities about Mr. Zelensky. Yes, he comes center stage from semi-obscurity. And the Antichrist will indeed do that. He'll indeed do that. I can understand why people, why many people, have the view he could be the Antichrist. Based on coming out of obscurity, based on a Jewish identity that means nothing to him, based on his ability to captivate people with his personal charisma, addressing parliaments and Congress, NATO, the European Union. Now, we have to understand certain things against the political background before we go to Scripture. The NATO charter, by which NATO was chartered, says that NATO cannot attack any country that has not attacked the NATO country. If you violate the NATO treaty, you're guilty of war crimes. Well, Madeleine Albright, who died this week, Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, Javier Solano, the Eurocrat, socialist, and Wesley Clark, Clark, American general, former commander of NATO forces, they all violated the NATO Charter when they bombed the Serbs and took the side of Kosovo and Croats against the Serbs. Well, the Serbs were not good people. They came from Tito. They'd been communists. Nobody is heralding them as heroes. But the Kosovo Liberation Army was aligned with Al-Qaeda, the people who would shortly thereafter perpetrate the attacks of September 11th. This is what Clinton did. This is what Blair did. They violated the NATO treaty. And there are people trying to persuade us that the NATO treaty should be violated again, entering into this conflict with no-fly zones and things like this. Now, I'm not against giving aid to the Ukraine. I'm not against giving aid to the Ukraine. In my personal view, Mr. Biden is as responsible for what is happening in the Ukraine as Putin is. Mr. Biden stopped armed shipments to the Ukraine last year. That was a signal to Putin. Mr. Biden walked out of Afghanistan and left it in the hands of radical Islamic terrorists who protected al-Qaeda. That sent a signal to Russia, to Putin, and to China. Additionally, he took the United States from being an energy-independent country and even an exporter, and he made it an importer, dependent on countries who hate the West, and particularly hate the United States. This gave Mr. Putin economic leverage. Americans were paying for it at the pump. Americans were financing the invasion before the embargo. But France is still doing it. The French oil company Total says it's still going to buy oil from Mr. Tito, uh, reincarnated. It's still going to buy oil from Mr. Putin, that is Mr. Stalin reincarnated. Vladimir Putin 
is a Stalinist. He wants his legacy to be the resuscitation of the fall, fallen, uh, fallen Russian Empire. He knows that as a KGB agent, the Warsaw Pact collapsed, then the Soviet Union collapsed, then the Confederation of Independent States, its successor collapsed, and then with Chechnya, Russia was on the verge of collapsing. He wants to reverse this and save the Russian legacy as an empire, driven by vengeance against the West, particularly against the United States and also Britain because of losing the Cold War. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. So when another man comes up and he's against that bad man, people think he's a good guy. The way people thought there were people in the Second World War in Britain and America who saw Joseph Stalin as an ally. Joseph Stalin killed more than twice as many people as Adolf Hitler, more than twice as many. Yet America and Britain made an alliance with Stalin to stop Hitler. But he was every bit as bad as Hitler was. Well, the Antichrist will be that way. He will seem to emerge as some kind of a political savior, but people will get more than they bargained for, particularly Israel. But I digress. Let's look at this further. The whole thing is a big mess. It's corrupt. It's complicated. And as in Yugoslavia, there are no good guys. During the Blitz, Churchill had a choice between Hitler and Stalin. Before Barbarossa, Stalin was providing Hitler with the aviation fuel to bomb London. Uh, he had a choice between two bad guys. Today, it's the same. There's a choice between two bad guys, but war and desperation have a way of making people think a bad guy is a good guy. And that is a strategy and a hand that the Antichrist is going to be a master at. And I agree that Zelensky is in that character. This is indisputable. I'm not saying he's not controlled by a spirit of Antichrist. I'm not saying his actions are not in harmony with what Antichrist will do. And I'm not saying the emergence of Zelensky is not a harbinger of the Antichrist. If you want to say an Antichrist, you can say that. The Pope is an Antichrist. Mohammed was an Antichrist. The Dalai Lama is an Antichrist. Joseph Smith is an Antichrist. You can say that. You want to say the spirit of Antichrist? Yes. The spirit of Antichrist is preparing the fallen world and seducing Israel and the Jews for the coming of the Antichrist the same way as the Holy Spirit is preparing the faithful church for the return of Jesus. They're both operating simultaneously. But to say he is the Antichrist, I'd like to go through six reasons why President Zelensky cannot be the Antichrist. Not the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, please. He stood on the sand of the seashore. And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having the ten horns and seven heads, etc. This comes from the book of Daniel, obviously. Well, here we have our first problem. The focus is on the Mediterranean basin. The Mediterranean basin. As an Ashkenazi Jew, he does not emerge from any Mediterranean country neither North African, Middle Eastern from the Levant, or Southern European. He's not a beast out of that sea. Secondly, Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. He provides no one should be able to buy or sell, 
except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Thus far, Mr. Zelensky has not emerged as any global economic guru. He, being a disciple of Schwab and in the World Economic Forum, would be pro-globalist, but he is not a major espouser of that direction. He's not someone like George Bush Sr. or Bill Clinton or Barack Obama. He's not someone like Klaus. He's not someone like Macron or Angela Merkel. He's not been in that league as yet. He has never demonstrated any semblance of economic leadership. The Antichrist must exercise his satanically animated leadership in three areas. Politically and strategically, economically, and in religion. We do not see an economic component to the public persona of Mr. Zelensky as yet. Daniel chapter 2, verse 42, the third reason he is not the Antichrist. And as the toes of the feet were partially of iron and partially of pottery, so some of the kingdom will be strong and some will be brittle. He's not a toe. The Ukraine was never part of the original Roman Empire in any sense of the word. Now, we're seeing something incredible happen now. We've seen Switzerland, a country that for over 400 years had an absolute foreign policy of neutrality, taking a stand against Putin over the Ukraine. They've broken with over 400 years of their rigid history of neutrality. Just yesterday, Finland, which was concretely neutral in the Cold War between the Soviets and the West, concretely neutral, is making applications to join NATO. We are seeing a coming together in Europe that was not there. As Biden pulls American leadership away, Europe is being forced increasingly to stand on its own feet and no longer can rely on America and Britain the way it once did. You are seeing this coming together, and I have no doubt this is something that has helped setting stage for Antichrist. No doubt. And it's interestingly happening <clears throat> at the same time Mr. Putin is selling oil and natural gas in rubles, his valueless currency gaining value again because he's only accepting payment in rubles, uh, and, and the French are buying it. Or the deal now with Saudi Arabia and, and, and China, pricing oil in yuan. They are trying to replace, or at least see, the euro dollar crack and the end of the American dollar as the world currency reserve. All of these trends have some kind of a prophetic significance. I'm not denying that. But he's not an economic player to date, and he's not a toe. He does not come from any country that was anywhere near being a part of the Roman Empire, of the fourth beast of Daniel, of the toes and the legs of iron, the East and the West, the Latin and the Greek. Not him. Not him. Fourth reason. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, verse 43. I've come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another shall come in his own name, you will receive him. Remember, the Antichrist will counterfeit Christ. He will try to make the Jews believe he's the Messiah or a messianic savior of some kind. Mr. Zelensky has played no religious card. 
None. Now, in this, it's interesting. Look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 37. He will show no regard for the gods of his fathers. Now that's disputed. Some will say that points to paganism. Others will say, no, Elohim is plural. It's a Jew who has no regard for the Torah and the faith of Moses and the prophets, or Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or for the desire of women. Again, he has to counterfeit Jesus, who was single. Now, there are others who will say this means he's a homosexual, but that's speculative, the Antichrist. There are others who will say that he's a misogynist, but that's also speculative. What is clear is he's married. He's married. And he's not a religious figure. The sixth comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. He will make a firm covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, that is the seven years, he will put a stop to sacrifice, <clears throat> grain offering. And on the wing of abomination, that is the abomination of desolation, will come one who makes desolate, that's Antichrist, even until a complete destruction, one that is de decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. <coughs> The Antichrist will operate in the Middle East in the character of Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus IV <coughs> from the Seleucid dynasty that succeeded Alexander the Great after Alexander died, as Daniel predicted. central to the Antichrist agenda will be the biblical lands. Europe, peripherally, but yes, Europe, but ultimately, the Middle East. He is not from the Roman Empire segment of Europe. He's not from the Mediterranean basis, and he has had no involvement in the politics of the Middle East, none. Trade relations with Turkey, certainly with Israel, yes. A Jew, yes. Secret defense and intelligence cooperation with the Israeli Mossad, absolutely. As well as with CIA and so forth. No, absolutely. All that is true, but he is not a player in Middle East geopolitics. He just does not fit the profile. He matches some of the characteristics of the Antichrist. He operates in an Antichrist spirit. He operates in a climate and in an environment that is setting the stage for Antichrist. He indicates certain things about the coming Antichrist. But at this point, we cannot conclude he is the Antichrist or anything close to it. There are too many other things that would have to change radically, and I don't see how some of them can possibly change at all. No, I do not believe that Mr. Zelensky is a good guy. He's a lesser of evils. Despite my compassion and sympathy for the Ukrainian people, I don't believe he's the heroic figure he portrays himself as he's an actor playing a role. No, I have no sympathy for Vladimir Putin. I've been warning about that Stalinist for years. None. 
And yes, I believe the Antichrist is coming and may already be alive. <clears throat> Keep an eye on people like Zelensky. Keep an eye on many people. But is he the man of lawlessness? Is he the son of perdition? Is he the beast of Revelation 13? Based on the biblical evidence and the historical and current realities in light of the biblical testimony, I would have to conclude he cannot be the Antichrist. I've seen nothing that would indicate otherwise. There are just too many things that don't add up. People are looking only at the things which do appear to add up. They are not taking a comprehensive view scripturally. Some things can't add up. It all has to add up. And it doesn't, at least not at the present time. Thank you so much for listening. My name is James Jacob Prash. Visit us on Morio TV and on RTN and on Grain Store. Thank you so much and God bless. <laughs>